Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Lisa Blackburn and this is my YouTube channel for everything I want to talk about science and math. And today we're going to do, we're going, I'm going to show my students how to do the calculations for the lab they did yesterday, peanut calorimetry. But I'll also just give the instructions for peanut calorimetry in case anybody else wants to do it. It's easy, it uses kind of common things you might have, and the math works out great. That's all you want in a lab, right? Is for it to be easy and fun and the math to work out great. Okay, so this is a lab I got a long time ago from the TV show, Scientific American Frontiers used to have a magazine and they would send it out to science teachers to get us to use their show. So I kept the lab because it works great and I always use it for heat. So what you do is see how it's got like a can and then you have a, a, a cork and a nut. Now I use all of this, the ring stand and the ring and stuff because I'm a chemistry teacher and I have them, but if you are a homeschooler or somebody who wants to do this at home, you can figure out a way to do this. You don't need this fancy equipment. Okay, and also I improved on their design of the lab. They had you poking holes in the can and putting pins. No, all you need is a stirring rod, a chopstick would also work, and you use that little pulley tab on top, stick the stick through the can, and then hang the can on something like that okay notice how there's black stuff on my can okay so in your can you're gonna put a hundred milliliters of water you could so get a hundred milliliters it can be tap water it doesn't have to be distilled or anything you put it in here and you see how you have it dangling here all right and then you need to get a cork now i have not always had a cork sometimes i do and sometimes i don't so i've used a candle before too candle you just it's got to be a good candle that's not going to get too soft too quickly or else the candle will melt because we're going to have fire. So I used a paper clip and I straightened out part of it and jammed it into the cork and that makes my highly scientific peanut holder. Then you're going to get a peanut, get a whole peanut, not a half a peanut, and you're going to weigh it. Now you need a balance where it is, will measure to less than a gram. I got these little balances. Um, I've gotten ones before off eBay for less than $10. It just can't measure to like every two grams or grams. You've got to have one that measures less than a gram. So a tenth of a gram, it could go to a hundredth is fine. These actually go to hundredths, but, um, but it, the math will work even if it goes to just tenths. So weigh your peanut. And then the other thing you do is after you, you know, remember you've put a hundred milliliters of water in your can, you need to have a thermometer and measure the temperature. It'll be about 20 degrees Celsius, but um, because that's room temperature, but you record that temperature. Then what you do is you're going to put your nut in your holder and you're going to light it. Now, I found the best way to do this is with my students. I have them light their gas burners and then use their gas burner to light a coffee stirrer. The reason why the coffee stirrers are better is because it takes a while to light the nut. And the, if you use a match, they'll end up with burnt fingers. So we got a safety first. So you light your coffee stirrer, but you could use a long stem match. That'd be fancy and that will work too. And you light your peanut. And what it does is it'll start getting oily as you hold the fire under it, and then it will catch fire. So it takes a while, like you might burn, you know, half of your coffee stir before your nut lights, but you not light the nut. And then what you can do is you can lower your can, like, you know, loosen this, it won't be hot yet from that nut. You lower it down until where the can is just right on top of the flame. Like you don't want to smother your flame, but you want your can just right there on top of the flame. So that heat is going into that little dome that's under the can and going into the water. The nut will burn itself out in a minute or two. It doesn't take very long at all. And then as soon as it does, measure the warmed up water. The water should be warmer now, measure its temperature. Once the nut is cool enough to touch, then measure the way your nut again. Okay, so that's your data. You've got your temperature of the water before and after. You've measured your water, it's 100 milliliters, and you've got the mass of the nut before and after. What we're doing is heat equals, I say it's mm cat, it's, it's mass times specific heat. I think I'm getting black on myself. Uh, mass times specific heat times the change in temperature, delta T. 
All right, so that's our formula. Now, how to do the calculations is, first of all, you get how much the mass of the net has changed. So this is for all my students. This is the math part you got to do. So take your first mass of your net, subtract the second mass of your net, and that's your answer to number one. What is, the ch how much, what is your mass and how you get it is you subtract these two numbers. Your first mass should be bigger than your second because you burnt up some of your mass. Okay, second, you have to find the change in temperature. So do your final water temperature, the higher one, minus the lower temperature, your initial one, which was about 20 degrees, your higher one should be hotter than that, and get the change in temperature. So now we got M, we got delta T, but we also have to take into account our volume. So we're going to take our answer to number two, and this is just the way it has it do it, we're going to take our answer to number two and multiply it times our volume, which is 0.1 liters. So um, whatever that answer is, multiply it times 0.1. That's because we did milliliters and now it's liters. Okay, and then to get the final answer to find out how many calories were in your nut is you take your answer to number three and you divide it by your answer to number one. You divide it by the mass and we will have the number of calories in our nut. Okay, so then what you do is you compare it and see if you got the right answer. So this is something where they, you have a right answer because they tell you on the can of nut or whatever package you have, um, how many nuts are in a serving and how many calories are in a serving. So I've got 35 pieces in a serving and I have 170 calories. So I do 170 divided by 35 and I can see what the calories of one nut is, and then compare it to my answer and see if I got the right answer or close to it or somewhere in that range. And over the years of doing this lab, usually kids get really close. Sometimes they get it exactly. And sometimes it's, you know, it's it's close. So like you'll buy those little packs of nuts. I'll buy them the little packs of the grocery and the, and the gas station on my way to school. Sometimes I go, oh, I forgot to get nuts for the nut lab. And they're little nuts. And then I'll buy planters when I remember and they're big nuts. And you really, the, the little nuts, you'll get an answer like um, like two or three calories per nut. And with the big nuts, you'll get like nine calories. It's like you'll get the answer that's exactly right. So then there's a few questions. I don't think you have to, the extension, uh, I want my kids to answer the question. Number one, can you make a better design? Number two, discuss the pros and cons of eating peanuts as a staple in the American diet. And number three, it says create a diet for an athlete, taking into consideration fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So there's some good little questions there for them to do. And then if you want to extend it, you can try different nuts and compare an almond to a peanut or, you know, which one has more energy, which one has more calories. All right. So like, share, subscribe. And for my class that's taken the EOC. This should help you with your calculations. Come ask me if you, are, if you still don't understand. Come by before school and I'll help you with it. All right, science is great.